Philippians chapter number 4. <clears throat> we'll read verse 13. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the sweet Spirit of God in the house of God tonight. Lord, I like it those nights we come and we get to shout and run and have a time. But Lord, there's just something about those moments when you just kind of come through with a ripple. And just minister to our hearts. And Lord, we thank you for the good song service. Every song bless me. Lord, I'm glad we can follow the fire. I'm glad that you're in us and we can face any storm. Lord, I'm glad you're a loving Father who always keeps your doors open for prodigals to come home. God, we're certainly thankful for the church where you changed our life. Lord, it's been good to be here. Thank you for the good testimonies. Lord, of how you've changed people's lives, how you've intervened. God, how you've opened doors. God, how you've just touched your children in their everyday lives. Lord, we thank you for that. Thank you for the Word of God. Now, Father, I pray you'd help us tonight. I pray you'd enlighten our minds. You'd strengthen our hearts. And I pray, God, that you would transform us into your likeness, that when we leave this place, folks will take note, we've been with Jesus. Bless now, help your people. Many of them are tired. Many of them have worked hard this week. Many of them have faced adversity. Lord, uh, some are... Lord, striving to get close to you. Some realize they they might be a little cold and they don't like it and they're trying to get to where they can feel the warmth of God again. And some, Lord, uh, uh, Lord, are stressed about some things going on in their life or in the world. And some are, Lord, just uh, 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 facing some things that, Lord, they just wish they didn't have to face. But, Lord, they're in the house of God tonight. God, I pray that, Lord, you'd blow through here and God do something for them. And, Father, we'll bless you and praise you for it, for it's in the holy name of Jesus we ask it all. Amen. Amen. I want to read this wonderful verse again. It said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Now, can I say that you'll find no shortage of seeing this uh, verse misquoted throughout the community. Miss Annette and I had to be in a store today, and uh, I told her uh, that there was a sign that had it misquoted. I said, I want you to look at that right there. I said, you might hear something about that soon. She said, you preaching on that tonight? I said, you just might hear something about that soon. Might want to look at that. I said, did you look at that? She said, I looked at it. I said, all right. But I want you to notice a few things about this verse. We'll get to the message. I want you to notice, first of all, the principle of this verse. The Bible says, I. Now, a lot of times we want to throw off and ask the Lord to do some things for us. But, Brother Brian, I'm thankful through the Word of God and through the Spirit of God, uh, He has given us the authority and the power to do some things on our own. A lot of times we don't want that. We'd rather push it off on the Lord. We'd rather uh, 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 somebody else do it for us or somebody else go through it for us. Uh, but we find that the principle of this verse is, I can do all things uh, through Christ which strengthens me. Uh, friends, uh, uh, listen, I don't know what you're going through, but I know you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. Uh, 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 you may not think you can. Uh, you may not think that you have the ability. Uh, but if you know the Lord, uh, and if you surrender your life to Him, uh, trust me, you can do things that you can't even imagine you can do. We find the principle is I. Now notice, if you will, the predisposition. I can do. Notice it didn't say I can't do. Notice it didn't say I might do. 
Notice it didn't think it didn't say, well, if uh, the planets align and if uh, 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 the wind blows and if the Republicans and Democrats get together, then we might be able to get something done. No, it doesn't say that. Doesn't say that if you got good health, you can. Doesn't say if you have a great education, you can. Doesn't say if uh, 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 you can do this in your life, do this in your life, then you can. No, it said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. So we notice that it says, uh, I can do. We see the principle. We see the predisposition, but notice the possibility. I can do all things. Now, we found out the other night, all means all. Didn't say I can do some things. Said I can do all things. Hmm? Y'all remember, I know they don't teach this in school anymore. They're too busy teaching about transgender. But you remember the little engine that could? I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Well, I got good news. You can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. Now, Miss Sammy Joe, you can do all things through Christ, which strengthens you. Not just some things. Say, well, I don't know if I can do that. Well, you can't then. But if you believe the Bible, you can do all things through Christ, which strengthens you. Notice, if you will, the power. Where's the power come from? I can do all things, here's the power, through Christ. The power comes through Him. In our own flesh, we can't even get out of the bed in the morning. No, you do realize that he does uh, 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 hold our breath in his hands, and through him we do consist. Do you understand that? Uh, But uh, listen, uh, uh, through Christ there's nothing I can't do. He is the power. In our own abilities, we'll fail. We'll make an utter uh, fool out of ourselves. Uh, but through Christ, there's nothing we can't do. Do you realize uh, uh, the uh, Goliath came down not because of David's slingshot, uh, not because of the five smooth stones he got out of the brook. Uh, do you realize David said, you came to me with spirit and sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. Uh, hey, through Christ, uh, a little David that couldn't even don Saul's armor uh, brought down the champion of the Philistines. Uh, hey, uh, uh, you do realize through Christ you can... Uh, Hey, through Christ, uh, uh, the three Hebrews didn't burn up in the fire. Uh, through Christ, Daniel didn't get to uh, eight in the lion's den. Uh, hey, through Christ, uh, all things are possible. Uh, you see, our problem is we doubt what God says. You say, no, preacher, I believe the Bible's true. Then how come you've got the word can't in your vocabulary? What's our rule around here? Number one rule around here? Mind the Lord. What's the second rule? We never say can't. But some of you have forgotten the second rule. We see the power is through Christ. Now notice, if you will, the purpose. Which strengtheneth me? Now you can find this verse and it'll say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That is not what the Bible says. The Bible doesn't say who strengthens me. What all modern translations and what all Bible correctors will say is that Christ will strengthen you to do all things. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. What strengthens me? All things. Which is not referring to Christ. Which is referring to all things. Listen. If strengthen was the word and not strengtheneth, strengthen would equip me to do something once. Strengtheneth equips me to do all things. He strengtheneth me, strengtheneth me to do all things. Hmm? What strengthens me? All things strengthens me. Do you understand that whatever you're going through right now, God has allowed it to come into your life to strengthen you to do all things? 
Did you not hear Miss Vanessa talk about a friend of her husband who the doctor was sure had prostate cancer, but now he doesn't have prostate cancer? Should that not strengthen you? Should not all things strengthen you that when the doctor tells you something, it may not necessarily be so? And should the... You not have to go through something that does not strengthen you. Listen, if you never got sick, you'd never know Jesus could heal you. If you never not got knocked down, you wouldn't know that Jesus could pick you back up. If you never failed, then you would never uh, know that Jesus can pick the clay back up and start remolding and reshaping uh, and use you again. Uh, are you listening? All things are what strengthens you. Uh, hey, uh, it's those things that will propel you to go beyond what you thought you could go on. Uh, and you realize I can do all things because everything that has ever come in my life, uh, uh, the Lord has given me the power to overcome it. Uh, uh, to go through it, to go around it, to go over it, to go under it. Uh, but I made it through uh, uh, because uh, it did not define me. It did not break me uh, because I had the power of God to overcome whatever came into my life. Uh, my dear friends, all things come to you to strengthen you. And I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Hmm? Christ gives you the power, but the things strengthen you, not only for this trial, but for the next one, and the next one, and the next one. Job says that man's days are few and full of trouble. I got news for you. Whatever you're facing tonight won't be the last thing you ever face. Hmm? You're going to face something else, and you're going to face something else. But if you look back and you see the hand of God in your life, uh, uh, you'll realize that trial way back there, you thought that would end you. Uh, uh, but God got you through that one. Uh, and then God got you through another one. Uh, and God got you through another one. Uh, and you realize, uh, hey, uh, through Christ, uh, you can be what God wants you to be. You can do all things. Say, so, preacher, I can't do it. Sure you can through Christ and those things will strengthen you so the next time you won't doubt Christ as much and there will come a point where you won't doubt him at all so when you see this verse misquoted who strengthens me say wrong the Bible says which strengtheneth me I'm going to preach on this thought tonight looking at I can do all things I'd preach on having a can-do attitude in a negative world. Really? You ever just look at the world and everything is negative? Huh? Watch the news. There's very little good news. Matter of fact, they go so far. I don't know if you ever watch Fox, uh, uh, Channel 19 news. They go so far, if they can't find enough bad news here, they're talking about somebody getting shot in Texas or somebody getting robbed in Georgia or something. Who cares what happened in Georgia? Tell me what happened here. Uh, uh, but they'll find something somewhere, something negative. I mean, it's all negative all the time. Uh, uh, you don't have too many feel-good stories. Uh, thanks be unto God, every now and then they'll find somebody that uh, had a wheelchair stolen from them or a bicycle stolen from them, and somebody in the community will donate a new one. Uh, and uh, what a blessing. You get one of them stories every now and then. Uh, but 99% it's negative, negative, negative. Even the weatherman lies to you. It's negative. Huh? And the national media is the worst. They just make up stuff. Negative, negative, negative. You remember when every day you had to hear how many people had COVID? How many times they come on and say, hey, got good news, 99 or 97.9% that had it have gotten over it. Didn't hear that. It's a negative world. Negative, negative, negative. I, I got to thinking about 
everything that goes on in the world today that didn't go on in the world when I was. I, I know sin has always been sin, and I know there's always been wickedness, and I know there's always been problem. But when I was coming up, we never heard of road rage. Hmm? Never heard about somebody going into a, a post office or a school and shooting everybody up. We didn't have all that. We didn't have all the, uh, the terrible horrific things that are going on in this world today uh, didn't have train wrecks every day and chemicals going up and blowing everybody up and you know tearing up the water supplies and everything else we didn't have all that hey when I grew up guess what chickens laid eggs it's just negative 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 all the time I guarantee you the people you work with a lot of what they say is just negative how many people you work with come in and say, Praise the Lord, we got a great boss? No. Nope. Everybody knows more than a boss man. And they'd run the company different. Uh, and, and, and Lord help you. Young people coming up today, they don't want to work. They don't want to put in 40 hours. They want the paycheck, but they don't want to work. They want to sit on their phone all day and get paid for it. Huh? It's a negative world. And can I say, as Christians, if you're not careful, you'll get sucked into that, and you'll be negative. Right. You know, we got the good news. Jesus saves. Yeah. Jesus saves. Uh, this world's not my home. We're just a passing through. Uh, hey, I'm going to heaven. Hallelujah. I'm going to heaven with the hammer down. What a blessing. Uh, I'm closer there today than I was yesterday. Uh, hey, what is heaven? Uh, it's a place where the streets are pure as gold. Uh, we're on every hill's a mansion. Uh, hey, where Jesus himself's the light of the city. Uh, where there be no more sorrow, no more sickness, no more death, no more negative. Everything will be positive forevermore. Because uh, we'll be with the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Uh, and we'll bless him and praise him forevermore. Uh, we've got the good news to tell people they don't have to die and go to hell. They deserve to, but they don't have to. But yet, if you're not careful, you'll get negative. You'll get negative about everything out there. If you're not careful, you get in here and you start getting negative. Huh? You'll find some fault in somebody because that's human nature. So how can we have a can-do attitude in a negative world? Well, can I say this is only possible by, first of all, having a faith that's undaunted. You've got to have a faith that's undaunted. So then faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. I just read you about 14 times, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. But some of you still don't believe it. Huh? Whether I feel good or I don't feel good, I believe that verse. Hmm? I have faith in what thus saith the Lord. You know it's impossible for God to lie to us. So I have faith in what he has to say. It will come to pass, uh, or it has come to pass, uh, or it's coming to pass. Uh, but if God said it, you can bank on it, neighbor. Uh, and when you got a faith that is undaunted, nothing the world says to you can bring you down. You can have a can-do attitude. But you can't have it without faith. See, when you don't have faith, you'll say, I can't do all things. But when you got faith, you said, you know what? God pinned that down. And I just believe God because he wouldn't lie to me. Never has yet. So I can do it. Hmm? Listen, when you got to go to the doctor and they start running tests on you and it's not comfortable, you'll find out whether or not you got a can-do attitude. You know, people have told me it is a proven science that your attitude has a whole lot to do with your healing. I've seen people get cancer, but cancer not get them. And just have a positive attitude, and they come through that thing. Hmm? Uh, I'll never forget when Miss Crystal had it. She lost her hair. She got that wig, like they tell every woman to get her, and it was uncomfortable. And she approached me. She said, well, it'd be all right if I didn't wear that wig. I said, yeah. She said, well, what will people say about my hair? I said, who cares? And she came. 
And that poor woman went through chemo while she's going through a divorce and never missed a service that I know of. She'd have chemo on Wednesday and be here Wednesday night. Because she just believed God was going to bring her through it. And not only did he bring her through it, he gave her a husband and now gave her another baby. I mean, God's good. I remember when Ms. Brandy had cancer. She had the right attitude. She's a little concerned because there was going to affect some of the other things that goes on in her life. But you know what? She never died of God. And there she sits. She don't have cancer no more. Huh? Isn't that a blessing? But I've seen other people get something far less severe. But they worry themselves to death over it. And they never get better. They get worse. I know people that won't leave their house today because they're scared to death that they're going to breathe air and they're going to catch something. Well, I got news for you. You can catch something at your house. And you also got a genetic makeup that you might have a gene in you that might get activated and you might have been carrying something for a long time that just might all of a sudden show up. But your attitude has a whole lot. Can I say something with, about Christianity? Your attitude towards Christ will prove whether or not you're a successful Christian or a non-successful Christian. I can do all things. You can have a can-do attitude in a negative world, but you've got to have a faith that's undaunted. Hmm? You've got to believe God above everything else. Hmm? Huh? Y'all, y'all start to think I look pretty good because I told you back there during COVID it was all made up and they was, they was trying to kill us and all that and everything. Hmm? Do you know how many masks have been sold I saw this statistic yesterday it blew me away there was so many masks produced that every person on earth could have had 91,000 of them wow. tell me somebody wasn't making some money somewhere on some mask huh you know what that tells me that tells me they're planning some more mask wearing days huh but I told you during all that stuff, keep your eyes on Jesus. Look, we're all still here. Huh? Nobody's had arms fall off or anything. Huh? Big B, we're still hanging in there. You can do all things. You've got a faith that's undaunted. Listen, no matter who's in office, when they open their mouth, at best they're telling you partial truths. But Jesus will tell you the truth every time. And I say you can have a can-do attitude in a negative world. World, It's only possible if you've got a faith that's undaunted, if you've got a fire that's undoused. You know, the devil wants to throw a wet blanket on all of our, our, our fire. Huh? He wants you not to be on fire. He wants you to be just a cold, compromised Christian. Because every day that you're on fire, you're an indictment against the people that think we're a cult. Hmm? Huh? You know why we need revival? Get them fires that, you know, blazing again in our soul. Because somewhere along the line, we got cant in our vocabulary. And our fire started dwindling. Hmm? We ought to be on fire for Jesus. He's coming soon. Somebody said that. We don't have long. He's coming. Uh, I want to go out in a blaze of glory. I don't want to limp into heaven, do you? Uh, I want to go out on fire. When you've got a fire that's undoused, you'll have a can-do attitude. Hmm? Can I say this? It's only possible when you've got a forgiveness that's undisguised. You'll never have a can-do attitude in a negative world if you have unforgiveness in your heart. I'm going to be real honest. Everybody in here has had something done wrong to them somewhere along the line. You have. Now, you can either choose to forgive people or you can let that thing turn into bitterness. And when it turns into bitterness, you'll be a miserable person and he who angers you controls you. I, I, this just popped in my mind. I remember one time, anybody remember field trips when you was a kid? That was a big deal when you got a field trip. First of all, you got out of school. That was a big deal. And you got to go do something you never got to do. 
And I never forget, we got to go to the planetarium. Everybody remember the planetarium? I was looking forward to that because I was kind of a analytical kind of guy and I was looking forward to finding out all that stuff about the planets and the galaxies and all that kind of stuff and seeing all of it. It's a big deal, you know. Not all of us got to fly the friendly skies for a living, you know what I'm saying? So I was looking forward to it. Well, there's a bunch of schools there. Oh, they filled that place up. We're all in there. And, and somebody was popping gum. So they come over the thing and said, if you don't quit popping gum, we're going to cut, sh shut off the planetarium. I wasn't popping gum. I was paying attention. Well, somebody popped gum again. Guess what? They shut the whole thing down, kicked us all out. I never did get to see the stars. I've been over there at the ark, but it isn't as big as the one that I went to as a kid. When you're a kid, everything's bigger. Huh? I still got bitterness in my heart today because some kid popping gum. I forgot about that until God just brought it to my memory. I got to go forgive some kid I didn't even know. You say, preach that's silly. Can I say most of the things that people harbor in their heart is silly? Can I say sometimes you've got unforgiveness in your heart over somebody that don't even know they've offended you? Now sometimes it's a big deal. Sometimes people have been really wronged or really abused or really uh, taken advantage of. And it's very difficult, but if you can't find a place to forgive them, uh, it will haunt you all of your days. Uh, 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 again, the Word of God says uh, that uh, God has forgiven us for Christ's sake and that we're to forgive others. Uh, and my dear friends, when you can learn uh, uh, to become spiritual enough to forgive people even if they don't deserve it, uh, it's not for their well-being, it's for your well-being, it's for your spirituality. Uh, and it will change your attitude into a can-do attitude if you will truly learn how to forgive. I'm not saying it's easy, but friend, it wasn't easy for Jesus to carry that cross two miles down the Via Della Rosa and go and, and, and strap himself to that cross and yield himself to it and let him drive nails in his hands and his feet. But he did it for you and I. And by his help and his grace, he can help you forgive somebody. I've seen many a Christian ruined because of bitterness. And I say, forgiveness is a very good key in having a can-do attitude in a negative world. Listen, I'm not making light. People's done you wrong. Can I say, I know church people that have done other church people wrong. And that's not easy. But I'm here to tell you, by God's grace, you can learn to forgive. And it'll help you. And you'll learn to have a can-do attitude. You know what happens a lot of times? You'll find that a lot of times that person you forgive, they end up getting right with God and getting right with you. And sometimes you find out that you're the one that has to get right with them. And I say you can have a can-do attitude in a negative world. It's only possible by having a faith that's undaunted, a fire that's undoused, a forgiveness that's undisguised, but also by having a focus that's undimmed. When you're looking around at the world, you can't help but get negative. I know I do. That's why the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. When your focus is on Him, and my dear friends, you're not looking around, you're looking up. And when you're looking up, you'll have a can-do attitude. Because you'll find that I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Huh? Brother Sam and I have a joke. We fight whenever we talk to see who could be the first one at the end of the conversation to say, keep looking up. Sometimes I win, sometimes he wins. But there's a great principle in that. When you have a focus that's undimmed, and that song Brother James sang, and I never heard that song, Brother James, but I liked it about following that fire. When you're focused on those things that will keep you fired up, when you're focused on Him, and you're focused on the Word of God, and you're focused on the good things of God, and what God's called you to do, and what God's doing in your life, my dear friends, you can't get negative. When you realize you deserve hell, and you're not going to hell, and you realize that the great God of heaven loves you, and that God's doing something in your life, and that God cares about you, what a blessing. It's hard to get negative when you get to thinking about the goodness of God.
I say this lastly, you can have a can't-do attitude in a negative world, but it's only possible when you have a foresight that's undiminished. You say, what are you talking about? I just keep looking for the lights of that city. Huh? Huh? I'm looking at him, but then every now and then I just start looking out towards that eastern sky. No heaven's on its way. You say, I've heard that all my, my, all my life, that Jesus is coming. Yeah, and he's closer today than he was yesterday. Right. He's coming. Right. Hmm. Say, how come he hadn't come yet? Because there's still sinners to be saved. Right. But when that last one gets in, mark her down, neighbor, we're out of here. Huh? Uh, you're out of here if you know him. Now, if you're not out of here, you can have it all. Because I'll be in glory. But you know what? I don't let it get diminished. But out there somewhere, everything I desire is already there. What a day that's going to be. Spend our eternity with him that saved us. Spend eternity with our loved ones and friends that have gone on before us. Get to be with Jesus forever and ever. Ever. You keep that foresight undiminished, you'll have a positive can do attitude. Uh, I said, all that say this tonight. Can you? Can you? The preacher, you don't know what I'm going through, but I know you can do all things through Christ, which strengthens you. But do you know that? Can you? If you're not convinced of that, I'd get in the altar tonight and say, Lord, help me. Help my faith. Help my fire. God, show me if i got some unforgiveness I'm going to need to get taken care of. God, keep my focus right. And God, keep my foresight on heaven. You put that into practice, friend. You'll be a positive effect in the lives of those people around you because you'll have a can-do attitude. And can I say something about the things of God? They're infectious. When you've got a can-do attitude and you've got the fire of God on you, it's infectious. Other people want it because hmm? they don't have it. They've seen the negative things. Let me say this. I'll close. I'm going to prove my point. For 30 years, the laughing stock of the NFL was the Cincinnati Bengals. How many, how many of you remember when we called them the Bungles? They were terrible. Huh? Remember when people used to wear bags over their heads when they went to the stadium and there was only 12 people there. They wouldn't go to the games. Uh, remember when they couldn't even show them on TV because they wouldn't sell them out because nobody, nobody cared about the bungles. Huh? Let's be honest. How many were Peyton Manning fans? Me. Huh? How many, you know, Thad was there. I'd say Terry Bradshaw fans, but anyway. But listen. <laughs> yes, Kenny Stabler. He always played on terrible teams, though he got the Raiders, but he was, he was the snake. Yeah. Didn't like him because I hate snakes. What I'm saying is, look what two years of winning has done for the Bengals. Where's, a, where's an odd head? Stand up. We finally got him out of a tar heel. Sweat. Look, at, huh? It's his? It's his? Yeah. You're fighting over it. Huh? Tar Heels. Son, you'll grow out of that. Huh? Aiden's wearing a Bengals jersey. Why? Because winning changes everything. Huh? Who'd ever thought a kid from eastern Ohio that ended up at LSU comes back to Cincinnati and changes a whole town? Because they're winners. Huh? And hey... I remember when Kenny Anderson and Isaac Curtis was the deal. They don't compare to Burroughs and Jamar Chase. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying 30 years of negativity has been erased in two years because of something positive. You know what to change your community? You know what to change your workplace? You know what to change your family? A can-do attitude. And you can have it if you want it but you got to want it more than you don't want it because if you don't want it you're never going to have it but you got to want it more than you don't want it what that means is you got to put it into practice and my dear friends it's available to anybody that wants it how about it
Can you? It's up to you. Let's all stand, Brother Clint. Get a song of invitation. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Thankful for the word of God and the promises contained therein. Lord, I'm glad we can do more than bank on them. We can live by them. Lord, they can impact our lives and our lives can impact other people's lives. God, help us to have a can-do attitude. Help us to realize that I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. God, help me to take whatever you put in my life use it for your glory. God, help us to get on fire for God and have an undaunted faith that, Lord, becomes infectious in the lives of others. Bless now this invitation. Lord, I don't know right now in my spirit, I, I feel like somebody's got some unforgiveness. Lord, I pray that you'd help them to deal with that. Give them victory over that. And then, Lord, bless them abundantly for it. Bless this invitation now. Speak to hearts. We'll bless you for it. For it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we do pray. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.